Hi everyone, Jeff Marion here. You've been injured in a car crash that's not your fault. It's possible to get a fair settlement for your case, but you have to be very careful. I'm going to go over with you in this video the top five mistakes people make when they are injured in a motor vehicle crash. This is a series of videos designed to help you understand and navigate personal injury law. I'll help you if you've been injured in a car crash with this video. I'll also help you if you've been injured by an unsafe product, such as in this video. So click on the subscribe button and click on the bell to make sure that you get notifications when new videos come out. I've been fighting for people who've been injured in crashes, in falls, and by unsafe products for over 25 years. I created this channel to help you understand this area of law and to help keep you safe. The first mistake is representing yourself. There's two sayings that apply here. The first one is you get what you pay for. The second one is that the attorney who represents himself has a fool for a client. You're at an extreme disadvantage. Yeah, you've got Google, you can try to research as best you can, but when you're dealing with the insurance company of the driver that caused the crash, that caused your injury, they are at a significant advantage to you in terms of information available to them, what they can do, and what they have access to that really puts you on the back foot. So it's important that, especially if you have been injured, you've lost time from work, you have a permanent, even mild disability as a result of this, that you contact an attorney as soon as practically possible. If it's a very minor injury, you can attempt to represent yourself, or if it's a minor crash um, that you had just had property damage, you know, go ahead. You don't have to contact an attorney. But if you have lost time from work, if you've been seriously injured, if you have a fracture, if you are still having symptoms from a concussion you got in that crash, by all means, you should contact a lawyer. Don't make that mistake of representing yourself. The second mistake that people make is giving a recorded statement to the insurance carrier. Now, what that does is that locks you in as to what happened. And you may, on reflection, have forgotten a detail uh, or forgotten part of it and something that you should have mentioned or recalled something that happened during the crash or something that was said. Um, but you're locked into that statement right there. And then anything that you add after that can hurt your credibility. Now, there's another part of this. One of the questions they're going to ask you is, uh, were you injured in the crash? Yes. What injuries did you suffer? So you might say, okay, well, I hurt my back. I had a concussion as a part of the injury and I was out of work for a few weeks as I had to recover from that. But let's say that you have a bad shoulder injury and ultimately you need treatment on that. But you forgot to talk at that time when they gave that statement about that shoulder injury. Well, the carrier is going to say to you, well, whoa, 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 you gave a statement here and you gave us this statement, told us that everything that in, was in that statement was true and you didn't say a darn thing about the shoulder injury, so we're not even going to acknowledge it. So talk to an attorney before you give any statement and make sure that you have every detail that you've detailed all your injuries and that you have a good recollection of what's in that crash. So don't make that mistake of giving a recorded statement immediately. Have you ever had a problem with an insurance company when you filed a claim on a car crash, whether you were injured or not? Tell us all about your experiences in the comments section below. Now the third mistake people believe is that the insurance company is on your side. Okay. You've all seen the commercials that this one's on your side. You're in good hands with this one. Uh, this one's a good neighbor. Understand that the insurance company has one goal, and that is to pay you as little money as possible so that they can keep their profits going. If they can save a nickel, they're going to do it. So they're not trying to make sure that you get all of the medical care that you might need uh, to pay for all of that or to pay you quickly and fairly the amount of your claim. 
So understand, especially when you're dealing with that carrier that represents the driver that hit you, you've got to be aware that they are trying to get out of this by paying as little money as possible. And if they don't offer you anything and you hire a lawyer, they're going to hire a lawyer to represent the driver that hit you. They're going to be the ones driving the train on who gets hired and who that attorney is. So they are more than willing to fight you and try to grind you down on this case and get you to accept a small amount uh, when your case may be worth more. So don't assume that the insurance carrier is trying to help you here. Um, always read between the lines and definitely, again, if you've been seriously injured, contact an attorney. Don't make that mistake of assuming that the insurance carrier is on your side. The fourth mistake that people make is not getting information about witnesses to the crash. If somebody saw the crash and talked to the police if they showed up, make sure that you have the name and the address so that your attorney can follow up. Uh, most plaintiff's attorneys will hire an investigator to go out and contact that person and get a statement or have someone from their own office contact the person and try to get a statement. Assuming that person wasn't also injured and hired another attorney because if somebody's represented by counsel, an attorney is ethically barred from speaking to that person without the permission of that person's attorney. So the thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got your witnesses locked in as to what they've seen and you know where they're at um, in case you need them down the line. Now, not only is your attorney going to get statements from them through an investigator, but if the case is put into a lawsuit, um, those witnesses will be deposed. That means we'll sit down with that witness with a court reporter and take that witness's statement as to what happened, the facts of what happened. So having that contact information makes it easy to send that notice, to send that subpoena so that you can make arrangements and your attorney can make arrangements to get that person's statement. Also, if the case does eventually go to trial, you may want that person as a witness on your case and you're going to want to be able to contact them. So a big mistake is not making sure that you have all witness information locked down. The fifth mistake people make is not following up with treatment. If there is any major gap in treatment, that is something that the defense side is going to jump all over. So make sure that you're following up. If you go to the emergency room, follow up with your primary care. If your primary care refers you to a specialist, see that specialist. If you're ordered to do physical therapy, get the physical therapy. Um, don't skip these appointments. Don't wait a few months, think you're feeling better, or you have to drop off the treatment for whatever reason, because they're going to seize on that gap. The inconsistency in treatment is something they're going to use and they're going to show to a jury that you're not hurt. So it's very important that you follow up with all treatment, that you do everything that your doctors tell you to do. Not only for your case, let's put your case aside. Let's talk about your own health. Um, your doctor knows best in this situation as to how they can try to get you back to the maximum level of functioning that you can get to. So make sure that you follow up with that treatment. Do not make that mistake of having big gaps in your treatment. That inconsistent treatment is a huge mistake that is going to potentially hurt the value of your case. And even in New York State, where we have a serious injury threshold, make the argument for the defense that this is not a serious injury that qualifies and that jury can come back, say that yes, that other person is liable, but you weren't seriously hurt so you get no recovery. Or you might not even get to a jury. The reports may come in and the other side will make a motion to dismiss your case saying that you can't possibly prove that you were seriously injured or you meet that serious injury threshold. The judge may agree and dismiss your case before you even get to a trial. So don't make that mistake of having big gaps in your treatment. If you want to learn more about personal injury law, I have this free PDF. If you use the link below, I'll make sure that you get a copy for free that will help you navigate a personal injury lawsuit. If you have been injured in a crash or in a fall or by an unsafe product, contact me at the email address below 
or at my website at www.jeffmarionlaw.com, and I'll be happy to sit down with you for free and discuss your case with you. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it or you found it informative, click on the like button. And please, if you know somebody in your social media network who could use this information, share it there. Also, you can subscribe to this channel by clicking on the circle that's on the screen right now. You can also check out other videos that I've done on personal injury law. There's a good example here. I think you'll really enjoy that one too. Check back here on a regular basis. If you subscribe, click on the bell to make sure that you get notifications when new videos come out. And we'll see you in the next video.